is your access pass. Amen. This is your access pass. What 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 do you need to arise? Secondly, or I mean, why do you need to arise? Why do you need to arise? Why do you need to arise? Go back to Isaiah 60, verse 1 and verse 3 and 4. When you arise, look at what it says here. When you arise, the first thing we say you're going to arise by the word of God, right? The entrance of his word will enter you. And then you're going to arise when you hear the word of God. Then why do you need to arise? Look at this. Gentiles shall come to your light. When you begin, when you arise and your light begins to shine, you're going to attract influential people into your life. Yeah. You're going to attract people of influence that can help you fulfill your dreams. That can help you achieve your goals. You're going to begin to attract people. Until you rise, you can't attract people that can help you. But when you arise, you're going to have people that can come into your life to help you to become everything that God wants you to be. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Yeah. And I see influential, important people coming into your life. Amen. I see helpers of destiny amen. coming into your life. Yeah. You can't even attract funds until you arise in your spirit. So I say, oh, I went to the bank and I couldn't get any loan or nobody's trying to help me. Because when you went there, you yourself, the person looking at you say, hey, if I give this person my money, it's going to be gone. Because of the way you are talking, there is no life, no spirit, no excitement. But when you go to the bank, that's why you see people who, don't, who, who are risen in their spirit. They might not even have vision, they might not have any dream, but they have a lot of money. Because they attract what it takes, they have what it takes. They've risen up on the inside of them. They can talk to you about their dreams, about your goals. Can you talk to somebody about your growth? They say, the Gentiles shall come to your light. Kings shall come to the brightness of what you're rising. Kings don't come until your rising is intensified. Until you rise in your spirit, there is, there is a magnetic force that pulls people, pulls help, pulls resources, pulls everything that you need. You know, many years ago, I got out of college and I, 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 didn't, I couldn't get uh, admission into, I got out of high school, I couldn't get admission into college. And I, w I was going there every day. New list will come. My name is not among. New list will come. My name is not among. You know. But one day my mother said to me, On Tuesday, I will go with you. Hey. I say, You say, Go with me to court. I say, Yeah. And when I go with you, that's what she was saying. You're going to come back with your admission letter. I'm like, eh, Do you know the chancellor? He said, No, I'm going to meet him today. <laughs> And when I meet him, he won't have any option but to give you on that day. True to it. This woman took me by the hand, took me to the college. We went from the registrar to the, to the highest place. I came out with my admission letter. The, the, because woman has reason in her spirit that, look, this guy must get. And me, when I go there, even to knock on the register, when they, when they, when they see this register, to knock, if you knock. You don't want to make too much noise, so you go and hang back. When she knocked, she opened the door. Good morning, sir. With excitement. Say, yeah, come in, ma'am, come in. The way she was dressed, she looked like a million bucks. You can't say no to her. <laughs> I learned from there. And praise the Lord. Yeah. Your future is calling on your name. You can attract influential people when you arise. Yeah, not when you are timid. Yeah, and I see important people coming into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why you need to arise. You know, another way by which you can arise is calling on Jesus. There was a man who was blind in Mark chapter 10. Is anybody getting anything today? Yeah. There was a man who was blind in scripture. His name was called Blind Bartimaeus. He was blind and he was abandoned by the wayside. Mark chapter 10, we're reading from verse 46 to 52. He was blind, he was by the wayside, he was begging. Life has thrown him a curveball. You know, he, ha he, he was born blind. Hello, somebody. Yeah. His name, his condition has become his name. Blind Bartimaeus. They call you by your condition. But this man wasn't going to settle for that condition. He was by the way, by the highway side. He wasn't on the highway. The highway is where people on freeway. When you go on freeway, people are speeding. Whenever you get on freeway, I was telling my wife, I said it's like a spirit enter people when they get on freeway. They just begin to speed. That's the kind of thing God wants you to have in your life for your life to gain speed. But this man was not even on the freeway. He was by the wayside. And he was begging. Your days of begging are over. Amen. I say your days of begging are over. Amen. He 
He said when he heard footsteps, he asked the people around him. They said he was Jesus that was passing by. This scripture is very revelatory to us today to help us. Hello, somebody. Yeah. He didn't allow his condition to deter him. He could not see. But he began to cry with his voice. Thou son of David. He was calling on Jesus. Have mercy on me. The blind man was calling on Jesus. Yeah. He could not see, but he could do something. There's always something you could, see, you could do. And there are many people who can see with their eyes who are spiritually blind. This man was blind in the physical, but in the spiritual, he, he could see. Because he could see, he could not see the physical, but he engaged his spiritual eyes to know that Jesus can help him. Can I hear you? Amen. Yeah. But there are many people who can see physically, but the spiritually, they are blind. They are blind. You know, that Jesus gave a parable in Mark chapter 4, verse 11. He said, unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of of God. But those who are without all the things, life is parable to them. They can't understand it. He said, list, are you going to look at verse 12 now? That what seeing they, that seeing they may see and not what perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand. List at any time they, what, they become converted. When you begin to see, your life will transform. Amen. When you begin to see, it is possible to see with your physical eyes but be spiritually blind. Amen. How do you see with your spiritual eyes? You see what God is saying. You see what God is doing in your life. Yes. You, you, when you begin to see, your story will change. Many people are blind to the truth. One of the powerful prayers you need to pray for yourself, that's what the psalmist prayed. He said, open my eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your word. Yeah, the wonders of God will open to you. The wonders of your life will open to you when you begin to look at God's word. You're going to begin to see the wonders you can become in your world. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Yeah. Have you seen it yet? Can you see what is written in scripture concerning you? There are many things in the Bible that are, written, that are spoken concerning you. Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 39. He said, search the scriptures for they testify of me. Search the scriptures for they testify of me. If the scriptures, they, 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 they testify of Jesus, that means they also testify of you too. Search the scriptures. Jesus found his mission in life in the Bible and he shook the world and the world has never recovered from that shaking because he said when he went to the temple he opened the Bible he found where it was written concerning him Luke chapter 4 and verse number 16 to 17 thereabout he found what was said concerning him and he began to read it and he began to declare it he saw it and the world has not recovered from it have you found out what god has said concerning you god has written some things concerning you many are blind to the truth yeah but when you read the scripture god will open your understanding Amen. that you might understand the scripture Amen. whatever god has ordained for you is written in the scripture can i hear you? Amen. Amen. search it so you can rise and stand in life find out what you see you, you only attend to the picture of yourself that you have. You can't rise beyond the picture of yourself that somebody has told you or you have of yourself. And a whole lot of time, if you don't get the right picture from God, nobody can tell you the true picture of your life but God. Somebody can tell you a picture that makes you look like nobody. If you ever grow up and people are telling you that you can never amount to anything, you are always this, you are always that, you're going to turn out like that. But if you can hear what God is saying, God says, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and never beneath. I have ordained you for success. No devil can keep you under. But have you found out what God has said concerning you? If you find out what God has said concerning you, there is no way anybody can say anything contrary. I read the story of a man who was also begging, like, I mean, he was homeless. He was living by the dumps. And an artist saw him, and the artist said to him, Can I paint you? The man said, Why not? When the artist began to paint him by the dumps, dumpster, when the artist painted him, the artist painted him with his face and different, he put, uh, what's it called, a wool jacket on him, put him in a posh environment. He didn't look at the environment he was in, he painted him under environment. When he finished, he looked at the picture and said, this is me. Is this how you see me? The man said, this is how I'm going to be. I'm not going to be like this no more. This is how I'm going to be. He got a different picture of himself. And he lived out that picture. 
He be, that was his portrait. Have you found out God's picture concerning you? I have a book I, I've written. Power Pictures is there. Go get it. Very powerful. I gave somebody last week. The person called me. I was screaming after, I mean, two weeks ago after service. Say, you have changed my life. Because you have changed the picture I can see of myself. May your life also change today in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you gotten God's picture? Say, search the scripture. They testify of you. The scripture has a lot of scriptures about your life. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Search it. In Romans chapter 1 verse 1 to 2, look at what Apostle Paul said here. We're talking about, you know, how you can arise. Look at it here. It says, Romans 1 verse 1 to 2, it says, Paul, look at it and I say, Paul, what a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised a full time by the prophets were in the Holy Scripture. Look at it. He said, Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be. What are you separated to be? What are you called to be? What has God called you to be? What are you separated to do? He said, separated unto the gospel of God. What are you separated for? He said, which he has ordained long time ago. Do you have any new word translation? Maybe give me NIV, NLT. Let's see what it says here. A month, long time ago. Uh -huh. go, go to verse 1. Paul is someone called to be an apostle, set apart for what? Set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. So he found himself in the Bible. What he was supposed to be. What he was supposed to do. Because they testify of us. The, the Scripture testify of you. They reveal your true identity. Before you are formed in your mother's belly. God knew you. Knew you. He said to Jeremiah, he said, I ordained you for something. I have a plan for your life. I have a purpose for your life. Yeah. What are you separated for? Do you know it? Have you found out? When would you find out? Are you going to be waiting until somebody come and define you wrongly? Yeah. Don't let anybody define you. You have to find out God's definition because nobody knows you like God. Jeremiah 1 5 said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you came out, I had something great for you. And look at it. Jeremiah 1 5, please. He said, Before I formed thee what in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you what a prophet to the nations. I have ordained you to do great things in your life. Somebody say great things. Great things. Yeah. I have ordained you for greatness. But look at what Jeremiah said concerning himself. And I said, I love you. I cannot speak. For I'm a child. You see, excuses. God said, that's not what I make you. I didn't make you to be a dumb person. I make you very intelligent. I, I've, I've wired you for great things in your life. You have to drop the pictures of yourself you have and embrace the pictures that God has for your life. And that is the goal this morning. That you will embrace the picture of God for your life. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Yeah, you see, you see, yeah, yeah, you have ordained you as a prophet to the nations, you will affect nations. Something will come out of you that will touch many nations in the name of I didn't hear your image. Say something will come out of you that will touch many nations, either a product, an idea, or your life will become important that will touch nations. You are meant to influence nations, not to die a local champion, not to die an unknown person, or to live a life of irrelevance. But you have to arise in your spirit. You see, many times we are surrounded with blessings and we cannot even see it. Yeah. We are surrounded with blessings, we cannot see it. In, Mark, in Genesis, I beg your pardon, 21, from verse 14 to 19, we saw the story of a, a lady there called Hagar. Hagar was the wife, I mean, the, the concubine of Abraham. And they had, you know, Abraham had a wife and he went and had uh, a baby mama. Then the wife became angry and said, this baby mama can't live in our house. You have to send her away. So Abraham couldn't, you know, he didn't want to go to, you know, divorce court and all that. So he just organized and pleaded with the baby woman, said, take your baby and I'll be taking care of you. So he gave them some bread and, you know, a bottle of water. He came after some time as they were journeying. She got to a place and that's what I want you to see here. She became discouraged because the water in her bottle ended. She spent, and the water was spent in her bottle, and she 
cast the child under one of the shrub. The child was her dream that she has conceived for nine months. She has nurtured it. Do you have a dream that you have been nurturing? What you want to be have? She had dreamed for this child, but now her resources was depleted. So she became discouraged and cast the child away. Maybe you have cast your dream away. You have forgotten about what the dream that God has given unto you. You have become discouraged because you have hit, you have, you have now hit a temporary, you know, obstacle or situation or condition in your life. Look at what the Bible says here. You see here? And she went and sat, you see? She went, she sat down over against him a good way off. You see, that's the sign of discouragement. When a person is, she went and sat down. That's why I say, you have to arise. Don't sit down. You know, too much sitting will lead to paralysis. Try and sit down for a whole day and not get up. When you get up, you can't even move. <laughs> Anytime you are stagnated, even if it's your hand, you hold like this for a minute. After some time, you can't move it. If you sit down too much, you're going to become, you know, stagnated. God forbid that is not your portion. That's the sign of discouragement. So you must always be on the move. Somebody say, I'm a man on the move. <laughs> yeah, you're a woman on the move. Yeah, you're a person on the move. Hello, somebody. I'm go. I'm a miracle going somewhere to happen. So I say, I am a miracle going somewhere to happen. Oh, you're not saying, say, I am a miracle going somewhere to happen. Say, I must happen. I must happen. Yeah, I must happen. I must manifest. Yeah, I won't sit down here and just die. Yeah, people will sit down, they just die. They fall up and say, why sit we here and die? Yeah. Let us arise. <laughs> the arising is the secret. Let us arise. Hmm. Glory to God. You shall arise in the name of Jesus. I see you rising in your spirit. I see, I see you rising in your spirit to chase that dream. Look at what she did here. And she went and sat down. We're in verse number 16 now, Genesis 21. I guess him a good way off, and it, as it were, a bow shot, for she said, let me not see the death of my child. That's her dream. And she sat, see the word again, over against him, and lift up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. He didn't hear the voice of the woman. Yeah. Because, you see, the boy... Even though she said, go and sit down and die, I believe the boy was not sitting. You see, boys, are we there? Yeah. God heard the voice of the lad, not the voice of the mother. Yeah. A discouraged person prayer is not something God wants to hear. Because a discouraged person prayer is never really a good prayer. Why God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you done? But the boy, let me tell you how you're going to know why I knew the boy was not uh, why the boy was not sitting down. There's a story I, I also heard or read of somebody, she, a woman, she took her son to the movie. And while they were in the movie, the boy kept jumping up, shouting, hey, oh, the mother said, hey, you can't be shouting like this. Sit down. After a minute, after some few minutes, the boy will jump up again. Hey, oh, the mother said, I said, sit down. The boy sat down again. Then after some time, the boy sat down. And the mother now said, yes, you are behaving well now. That's what I said. Sit down. The boy said, mom, I may be sitting on the outside, but I'm standing on the inside. Somebody is standing on the inside today. I said, I may be sitting on the outside, but I'm standing. So when she threw the guy to say, I don't want to see the guy dead. The boy, I don't think the boy just fell down and said, oh, my mother. He, he, he began to jump. He was just excited in his way. Praising God. I know my God is a miracle working God. I know my God. See, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, God has ordained praise. So God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What hailed thee, Hagar? Fear not. God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. So the guy, you see now? God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. So the guy was actually talking to God. He was praising God. He was excited. The mother has given up. Then he told her, Arise. <laughs> Lift up the lad. Hold him. Lift up your dream. I said, Lift up your dream. Lift up your desire. He said, For I will make him what? A great nation. Amen. Are you not helping with the scripture? I will make him what? A great nation. Lift, arise. Somebody say, I will, I will arise. That's your key. That's your access pass to your next level, to your breakthrough, to your blessing. I will arise, lift up the child. Yes, I will. Uh, somebody say, I will arise. I will arise. Or say, I will arise. I will arise. 
yeah arise lift up the child lift up your dreams lift up your goals lift up your desires say god say i will make that dream a great dream a successful dream a powerful dream i say i will arise in the name of jesus i'm not i'm not i don't like the way your son say i will arise in the name of jesus yeah arise I will arise. Lift up that dream. That's what the psalmist said. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes from unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Somebody say, my help is coming. Every day, not that there is help for that dream. There is help for that goal. There is help for that desire. I say, help is coming in the name of Jesus. Help is coming to you. There is help coming for provision in the name of Jesus. Help is coming. He said, I will make him a great nation. Then look at what the Bible says here. Look at the next verse. Next verse. We're talking about the eyes to be opened. God opened her eyes. Many times. Look at it. And she saw a well of water. She was by a well of breakthrough. She only had a bottle. But God had abundance provided for her. Hey, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to announce to you, supernatural supplies coming into your life. I say abundance is coming to you in the name of Jesus. I say abundance is coming to you. Plenty is coming to you. Surplus is coming to you. Yeah. She was believing God for a bottle, but God gave her a well of blessing. A well is coming into your life. Undeniable supply. Unlimited supply. Yeah. Receive unstoppable supply in your life. Lift up your hand and say, I receive the help of God. I receive supernatural supply. I receive provision in the name of Jesus. More than I can ever dream of. Yeah, more than my needs. She had a, a little bottle, but God gave her a well. The overflow of God's surplus is coming into your life. I said, begin to experience it in the name of Jesus. May your eyes be open. That's why you got to pray. Lord, open my eyes to see the blessing that you have for me. Open my eyes to see the provision that you have for me. Open my eye to see what you have spoken concerning me. The picture of me that you have in scripture. I want to be able to see it. So I say, I want to be able to see it. Yeah, may your eyes be open in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, may your eyes be open in the name of Jesus. Begin to see what God can do for you. This is where we begin to pray. This is where we're going to pray. You are going to pray right now. We're going to pray. I'm done preaching for now because of my time. Did you get anything? You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes to your promises. Open my eyes. I want to be able to see. Just touch your eyes and say, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. Not just physical eyes. Because in your natural eye, you might not be seeing well. You need your eyes of the spirit to be open. The Bible says, why we look not at the things which are seen? For the things which you see, they are temporary. But the things which you cannot see that God has promised to you, they are eternal. They will last forever. So op say, Lord, open my eyes. Anybody praying here, say, Lord, open my eyes to see the promise that you have for me. The scripture testify of me. The scripture is speaking about my breakthrough. What has God said concerning me in scriptures that can make me a wonder in my wall? Open my eyes. Pray now. Pray. Pray. Praying is talking to God. Just talk and say, God, I, I pray. I ask you to please open my eyes. Let me see what you have promised me. Let me see the goodness that you have for me. Open my eyes in the name of Jesus. Are you talking to God at all? Mashaka take it. Father Lord, I pray. Lord, right now, open my eyes. Open everyone's eyes here to see the picture you have painted for us in scripture. In the name of Jesus. Help us to see away from our condition, away from our circumstance. Blind Bartimaeus raised his own expectancy. Even though he was blind physically, he could see himself seeing. That's why he was calling on Jesus. You call on Jesus today. Jesus, I want to see what you have for me. I want to see. When Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, that I may receive my sight. I want to see. He wasn't seeing himself as blind. Don't let your condition define you. Let the promise of God be the definition of your life. Open your mouth and pray. Father, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that let every eye hearing the sound of my voice be open right now to be able to see what you have for them, to see the future that you have for them, that it is colorful, that their best days are ahead of them. Every one of us, oh God, open your people's eyes today, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, let eyes be open. Every blindness, we curse it. We curse blindness in the name of Jesus. We command it to go we command sight to be restored spiritual eyes to be 
be open to the blessings to the provision to the goodness of god pray the second prayer lord help me to see the provision you have surrounded me with there's always help from god there's always a blessing of god in your surrounding many times we despise what god has given to us we despise what god has given to us that woman they asked her i said what do you have in your house what do you have in your life she said i have nothing i have nothing then the prophet said no god does not leave somebody without nothing god always has given you something you have a talent you have a gift you have a pot of oil there is something that god can use in your life you have a dream you have something so say lord open my eyes to what you have put in me that i'm not seeing right now are you praying at all your story is about to change what is it that you are putting me that woman was just believing god for you know a bottle to be filled but god had a well of provision a well of supply around her pray lord let me see the well of your supply the well of blessing that is around my life are you praying at all fire prayer to god fire your prayer to god let god hear your voice say god hear the voice of the lord don't just keep quiet let god hear your voice say something to god today in your own way in any way you can talk to god that little lad i don't know how what he said to god but the bible said god heard the voice of the lad let god hear your own voice god let god hear your voice so that your eyes can be open in the name of jesus so that you can begin to possess your possession father lord i thank you oh god that you hear the voice of everyone oh god calling upon you right now hear our voice he said my voice shall thou hear hear my voice oh god open my eyes to the blessing to the supply to the provision to the miracle that you have for my life open my eyes to see lord in the name of jesus i will not die of shortage i will not i will not give my dream to death open my eyes oh god to see the miracles that can happen oh yes the change that can happen the help that you are positioned around me kilambra toskebeli amasakata kilebra toskopeli bababa shekete makure beseke to libra babasa I see God opening your eyes right now. I see God opening your eyes right now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to declare, my eyes are open. My eyes are open in the name of Jesus. Say, my eyes are open. Say, Father, I thank you for hearing me today. I will arise in the name of Jesus. My eyes are open. Declare eyes are open in the name of Jesus Christ. Karaba seketo koro bo 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 bo. Hiram palomo mosika bere 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 bere. Thank you, Father. We give you praise for opening our eyes to behold wondrous things. What is the scripture testifying about me? About my health? About my business? About my home? Yes, about, you said there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus Christ. You said there shall be no loss in the name of, you said though your beginning was small, your later end will greatly increase. There's great increase coming he said i have ordained you for greatness i have ordained you as a prophet to the nations your life will touch nations i say your career will touch nations your business will touch nations in the name of jesus christ oh yes kings shall come to your to the brightness of your rising in the mighty name of jesus receive it right now i prophesy into your life i say kings shall come to the brightness of your rising in the name of jesus the gentiles shall come to your light help us will come to you help will come from heaven in the mighty name of jesus your story will change i say your story will change your life will be better than what it is right now you will succeed like you have never known receive it in the name of jesus i prophesy receive the impartation begin to rise up you say i went up by revelation go higher in life go higher in accomplishment go higher in everything that you do in the mighty name of jesus come out of that sickness whatever is holding you bound keeping you down we command that spirit of infirmity broken in the name of jesus anyone hearing the sound of my voice who is sick whether you have natural blindness you have spiritual blindness you are sick in any part of your body you are, your your feet is lame in the name of jesus christ you are crippled in your mind i decree your liberty i command the chains to break from your life anywhere you are in the name of jesus any confusion be, be clouding your mind i command it to break in the name of jesus receive light from heaven i say receive light from heaven i command the darkness around your life to shatter in the mighty name of jesus your story begins to change right now receive it now the help of god thank you father i give you praise thank god for answer prayers wherever you are thank god for answer prayer something new is happening to you yes 
Everybody close your eyes, bow your head. In a minute, I want to pray for somebody here. The Bible says, except a person be born again, he cannot see the, ki the kingdom of God. He cannot see the goodness of God. God wants to be good to you. I said God wants to be good to you. But you need to be born again. To be born again means to accept Jesus Christ from today as your Lord and Savior. To surrender your life to God. To ask Jesus to come into your life. He said, Christ shall, you know, come to you. Christ shall come to you and he will give you light. Christ will come to you and he will give you light. Let Jesus come to you today and give you light in your life. So that it can arise out of darkness, out of slumber, so that new things can begin to happen in your life. I want to pray for you and I want you to say this prayer. The prayer is for you to be born again. You're going to become a child of God. God's going to give you his life and you're going to become a different person. Your life is going to change from today. Maybe that's why God brought you here to hear this message in-house, online, anywhere you are. So say this simple prayer. I mean, in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, today I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord to be my savior say i know i'm a sinner but i ask you to forgive me my sin give me a new beginning open my eyes oh god to see you and to know you so i can have a different picture of my life so i can see myself the way you see me thank you jesus for dying for me thank you lord for saving me in jesus name i pray Amen. All head are still bowed. All eyes are closed. If you are in the house, anywhere you are, I want you to lift up your right hand. If you said that prayer, I want to pray for you. Anywhere you are, just lift up your right hand. Don't look at your left to the right. Just say, today I want to give my heart to the Lord. It's going to be the best remaining days of your life. It's going to be the best day. Anybody right here, there in your home, yeah, lift up that hand. Say, Father, say, Lord, this is me. I'm not ashamed. Don't be afraid. God is calling you to himself. Father, Lord, I pray for that person there in his, wherever the person is right now who has said this prayer. I pray that this person sins are forgiven. I pray that you give this person a new beginning. I pray in the name of Jesus that you write this person's name in the book of life. I pray that this person's eyes are open to begin to see your goodness, your blessing that you have supplied and made provision for around his or her life. I command Satan's hold broken over your life. Begin to live a new life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, my friend. Wherever you are, I rejoice with you if you said that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. I want you to take another step further. If you can hear my voice, I want you to email me because I want to send some materials to you that will help in your work and your growth with God. And I also want to keep praying for you by name. So email me. My email address is info at hoffan.org. I-N-F-O at H-O-F-F-A-N.org. I-N-F-O at H-O-F-F-A-N.org. H as in holy, O as in omega, F as in faith, F as in faith, A as in alpha, N as in new dot O-R-G. Anywhere you are in the world, email me. If you're watching on Facebook, just inbox me. I'll send some materials to you. That'll be a blessing to you. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. While I was praying, the Holy Spirit is signaling to me. Is healing somebody knee. I don't know what, what, where you are whether in the house or some. God is healing somebody's knee right now as I'm praying right now. So receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. The heal is healing your knee and your back. The, the knee is affecting you and the pain is on your hip and your back. But God says, I'm healing you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing. And any kind of sickness in your body, I speak health to you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. God bless you. I would love to hear your testimonies to know what God has done. Receive your healing right now. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you happy, church? Let's give the Lord a big, big clap of a hallelujah. Clap unto the Lord if God has blessed you. Yes, thank you, Father, for sending your word. Thank you for blessing us today. We will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will arise. I will and I will possess my possession. I will be that person that God wants me to be. Say, nothing will keep me down anymore. I will be successful. I will be wealthy. I will be healthy. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Yeah, kings shall come to the brightness of your rising. Influential people will begin to come into your life to help you and to assist you in your dream. People that can help you in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.